So basically, we're going to mix uh, the contents of what'll make up one eight foot by four foot slab of papercrete. So our ingredients are quickcrete concrete, a joint compound, one bag per eight foot by four slab. We throw in <laughs> one bottle of boric acid so bugs will not like our wall. And we're gonna mix that with 90 pounds of recycled newspaper, which are in these boxes. We're gonna weigh off this paper to about 33 pounds. You need a little more here. Just start loading it directly into the back of the mixer. We'll add water and then we uh, will start adding our Portland cement and our joint compound and other stuff. We'll do about four laps. In total, we'll probably go about a third of a mile to half a mile to get a complete mix. And this will take about an hour of just adding ingredients to the pot. These are the slabs that have been sitting here for a couple weeks drying out. These will be turned into um, a fence or um, insulation for the, um, for the rooms that are made out of the shipping containers. Pretty solid. So this is a mixer we made ourselves. And uh, basically it's an axle. A little uh, feed tank <laughs> and a hitch. The differential from the axle spins the lawnmower blade when we move it. So it's, it's as low tech as it gets. If we had a donkey, I guess we could do it with that. <laughs> we learned that if you pre soak the newspaper, you have superhuman strength. And even like independent, one person can pair eight newspapers clustered together. We've even noticed different newspapers have different quality. <laughs> like New York Times really breaks down pretty nicely. And there's plenty of stuff online about how to make a mixer about um, making blocks with paper cree and the structures people have made. But there's not much online about um, actually what their exact recipe was and what kind of paper they used and where their source was. Like, you know, there's, there's only so much information there and you really gotta get into it to uh, find the mix that works for you and for your mixer. How much do we fill this up? Well, we're only going to go with a third of the paper, a third of the joint compound, and a third of the cement, but we'll use a lot of water on the first two mixes. And then the third, we'll back off on the water content and really just kind of get it level with the top. So eventually, this will be almost entirely full of paper creep. We've dried enough slabs to pretty much complete this fence and uh, they're, they just need to be knocked loose and framed in with the metal. And then we bring them over to the poles and bolt them up. We use four inch wide um, galvanized metal framing studs. And we use sheet metal screws to drill through each stud at the corners. And then on the other side, we use a seven inch gutter screw. It's normally used to put gutters on houses. And it goes right through the papercrete slab into the telephone pole. That gives us our shear strength, the telephone pole being the vertical balancer with the creep. And then below, we have three cinder blocks that have been filled in with uh, concrete, and they have rebar pegs that are two feet long, one foot going into the cinder block and one foot going into the slab, which again helps with the shear strength of this structure. When we first moved here, we were looking at materials to make a fence out of, and we couldn't find a material that would be inexpensive to make a fence out of. We couldn't find one that would be environmentally friendly. We couldn't find one that wasn't super labor intensive. And this paper crease is really the closest we've come since we can produce a slab, hang it up, produce the next slab. We don't need adobe. We don't need straw bale. There's plenty of paper to find. Oh yeah, it's looking really good. We're doing great today. I think that paper crete is particularly empowering because you're really using garbage and you're making it into, you're really upcycling in a way because you're taking a newspaper which is read once, not useful anymore, and you're making it into insulation for your home which is going to lower all your power bills. Maybe last a hundred years. It's going to be exterior to your home in our case. So if there even was concern of toxicity, it's outside your house. And yeah, it's, it's basically, you're sequestering all the carbon within the paper, so it's not gonna vent into the atmosphere. You know, I could see a, like a whole town getting together and like yep. building well, that's this. That's the thing, people have said like, why don't you manufacture this and supply it? What would be sensible is that every community is making their own, and then there's no transportation. And I think, you know. A lot, like a lot of uh, green 
um, permaculture workshop places where you come down, you pay them money to make someone else a straw bale house or something so you can learn to make a straw bale home. This could work similarly. I mean, I think people might even be willing to pay to stay here with us and learn to make this so they can go home and make a mixer and start using paper. When we're really pouring consistently, it's like this is how I read the paper. <laughs> when there's a big snowstorm here, and there aren't many big snowstorms in southern New Mexico. Yeah. And um, it was like eight to ten inches. It was a lot of snow. The New York Times truck was coming through town, and they we don't get the New York Times during the week here. We're too small. So the truck pulled up to the first hotel in town and said, hey, where can we dump all these papers? They're closing the highway, and we can't make it to Las Cruces, the town we're heading to with them. And, you know, we just got to dump our load. And he's like, wait, I'll take them because he knew us and he knew we needed all this paper. So he brought us literally a ton of paper, 2,000 pounds of paper. You know, just going through this, you know, at times, you know, you'd step back and you're looking at everything and, you know, asking, wow, is this like too laborious? You know, it takes an awful long time to do this. And then, you know, you, you just kind of realize, well, of course it is. And we're just unnaturally trained to be overly, you know, used to convenience and everything comes in an instant and you have to kind of work your way out of that and recognize that, you know, everything's kind of hard and takes some time. <laughs> but well, we are going to unhitch this mixer, lift it up, and kind of throw, throw the whole it. thing because it's beyond our weight to control. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> right. We need some tensile strength, meaning this can bend in certain directions and not just fall apart because it's a bunch of paper. So these sticks provide us a little bit of tensile strength. So you throw some in at an angle. Now we try not to have the sticks popping out, but in the end, if it does, you just hack it off. And you have to remember, this is like making a textile. It's the rawest level, and there's gonna be so many layers over it.